going to look as good as I possibly can, and they know what will work on me, and I need to be open to that. All right, I actually. I feel like it fits that glam theme that we're going for with this movie. I don't want anything poofy, but make sure I look feminine. When you have muscles and curves, it's challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thousand euros. Number seven, Bride Laura. Laura Charles, a 21-year-old country girl from Alabama, was about to embark on a journey that would test her patience and challenge her values. As she prepared for a wedding to Todd, a true embodiment of country life, she found herself caught between the clash of different viewpoints on what her bridal attire should be. Laura considered herself a modern and city girl, eager to express her individuality and embrace a dress that reflected her contemporary taste. Grandmother and my future mother-in-law, Miss Francis. Laura, do you have some ideas of what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Traditional. No. Uh, she's more old-fashioned where mm -hmm. she wants to wear. However, her conservative mother-in-law and traditional grandmother had different ideas in mind. Their contrasting perspectives threatened to overshadow Laura's desires, making the wedding planning process a tumultuous experience. When Laura confided in the bridal consultant about her preference for a sweetheart neckline, her mother-in-law's resistance was immediate. The conservative matriarch argued against the choice, insisting that Laura should cover up and not show any skin. On the other hand, her grandmother, steeped in tradition, advocated for a classic white dress, emphasizing simplicity and adherence to established norms. The bridal consultants, caught in the middle of this family drama, decided to appease the mother-in-law's wishes and presented Laura with a dress that left her feeling uninspired. The gown, resembling something from a bygone era, covered every inch of Laura's skin and lace, leaving her feeling suffocated and disconnected from her true self. As she stepped out, the reaction was not what anyone had hoped for. Laughter filled the room, and even Laura couldn't help but join in, acknowledging the mismatch between her personality and the prehistoric dress. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. I do. <laughs> and nobody liked this dress. I have changed my mind. <laughs> I'm very Refusing to settle for a dress that didn't resonate with her, Laura mustered the courage to voice her true desires. She switched into dress number two, which featured the sweetheart neckline she had initially envisioned. Instantly, Laura felt a surge of excitement and admiration for the dress, recognizing that it was a perfect fit for her. However, her grandmother's disapproval cast a shadow over her joy. Caught in a tangle of conflicting opinions, Laura decided to try on dress number three, hoping to find a compromise that would appease everyone. To her delight, it turned out to be the dress that struck a chord with both her and her family. The gown embodied a modern elegance that satisfied Laura's desire for contemporary flair while still maintaining a touch of tradition that pleased her grandmother. Number 6. Bride Sarah Hurley Sarah Hurley, a dedicated and determined bodybuilder, is on a mission to discover a dress that will beautifully showcase her sculpted physique while embracing her femininity. Supported by her trusted fit crew, a group of individuals who understand her body better than anyone else, Sarah is prepared to face the challenge of fighting the ideal dress that will make her feel both empowered and stunning on her wedding day. Despite her high standards and non-conventional physique, Sarah and her crew are fully prepared to tackle the search with unwavering determination and enthusiasm. Robin, the manager at Say Yes to the Dress, never knows who will walk through her doors next. As she readies herself for her next appointment, she engages in a series of push-ups, mentally preparing for the unexpected. Little does she know, her next encounter will be with one of the most formidable competitors in the bodybuilding world, Sarah Hurley. Sarah, a true force to be reckoned with, achieved an impressive third-place finish in the global competition just the previous year. Despite her muscular frame, she yearns to radiate femininity on her wedding day. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Hurley. I am 38 years old. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and that hugs her body. Tell me about the budget. The budget is about $5,000. All right, let's take those back. Accompanied by her fit crew, a close-knit circle of bodybuilder friends, she embarks on the quest for the perfect dress for her beach wedding in Mexico. The initial dress Sarah tries on boasts a trendy one-shoulder style, instantly capturing her admiration. However, her discerning fit crew expresses reservations, believing it falls short of suiting her physique. Despite their opinions, Sarah remains receptive to exploring other options. Robin, the manager, skillfully presents a more feminine dress that tastefully accentuates Sarah's muscular arms, an aspect she deeply appreciates. Yet once again, her fit crew disapproves, expressing dissent. 
However, this time, Sarah remains steadfast in her decision. Realizing that it's her wedding day, she acknowledges her prerogative to select the dress that makes her feel exquisitely beautiful. She boldly embraces a dress that deviates from her typical everyday attire while still highlighting her well-defined physique. Tell us what you're thinking. I feel like a bride in this. <laughs> it's time for the friends to- Adorned with a breathtaking veil and a dazzling headpiece, Sarah finally visualizes herself as a radiant bride. With resounding affirmation, she joyously declares her choice by saying yes to the dress. The selected gown masterfully showcases her distinctive physique while allowing her to exude femininity and beauty on her special day. The palpable gratitude Sarah feels towards Barry, her unwavering source of support, fills the air as she prepares to grace the aisle in her perfect dress. She acknowledges the challenges she has encountered as a woman in the bodybuilding realm. Nevertheless, accompanied by her soulmate, she stands ready to face whatever obstacles life presents. As she exchanges vows amidst the sandy beaches of Mexico, she is reminded that love transcends boundaries and she has discovered her ideal partner both in life and at the gym. So what can we glean from Sarah's journey on Say Yes to the Dress? It extends beyond merely finding a flawless gown. It revolves around discovering the dress that authentically reflects who you are even on your most extraordinary day. Sarah may be a bodybuilder, but at her core, she's a bride who seeks a dress that epitomizes her strength, fierceness, and beauty. Number 5. Bride Sneed Sneed, an assertive and captivating woman, had come to a monumental decision to marry her longtime sweetheart. Accompanied by her entourage of beloved family and friends, she embarked on a quest to find the ideal wedding gown armed with her impeccable taste and discerning eye. I'm from Dublin, but I live in Slane, County Meads. Someone my height. <laughs> with me today, I have my... When they found out that we were getting married, they were just absolutely delighted. Have you tried on any dresses before? As Sneed stepped into the esteemed bridal boutique, an atmosphere of refinement and grace enveloped her. Surrounded by the creme de la creme of the bridal fashion industry, she knew she had chosen the perfect place to cater to her exquisite preferences. Alongside her trusted stylist, Frank, she was determined to discover a gown that would embody her sophisticated and fashion-forward sensibilities. Slipping into the first dress, a dazzling creation inspired by the opulence of the Great Gatsby era, a collective gasp of admiration echoed through her entourage. The gown exuded glamour and luxury, yet Sneed remained resolute in exploring all her options. She sought a dress that would not only impress others but also resonate deeply with her personal style. One dress after another, Snee continued her search, each one blending tradition and modernity in its own unique way. She tried on a fusion gown, effortlessly merging the elegance of a traditional princess silhouette with a contemporary twist. It was truly a showstopper, capturing the essence of timeless charm with a modern edge. However, something felt incomplete. Undeterred, Sneed returned to the rocks, determined to discover a gown that would truly take her breath away. And then she found it. The gown that would forever be etched in her memory. A fitted mermaid cut adorned with exquisite white lace cascading gracefully from the knees down. It was undeniably beautiful, yet it didn't quite align with Sneed's personal taste. Surrounded by her sister, sister-in-law, and close friends, Sneed sought their opinions, valuing their insight and their quest for the perfect gown. Excitement and anticipation fill the room as they carefully weigh the merits of each dress against Sneed's vision. Amidst the deliberations, Frank, with a mischievous sparkle in his eye, presented Sneed with one final gown, a gown that might just be the perfect match for his discerning bride. With bated breath, Sneed stepped into the changing room, her heart pounding with anticipation. And then it happened, the moment of transformation. Dress number four embraced Sneed's silhouette and a hush fell over the room. Radiance emanated from her and it was evident that she had found the gown that spoke to her heart. It was far from what she had initially imagined, yet it made her feel like a superstar. The gown hugged her curves flawlessly, featuring a fitted sweetheart neckline, elegant cascading net, and a mesmerizing long train. I was wild, so I'm now I'm a little bit confused. After looking at it more, and I actually do prefer this one. And the piece that it might have missed was absolutely there. I saw excitement. It was a harmonious composition that embodied Sneed's individuality and distinctive style. Everyone in the room was captivated by her presence in that gown, confirming that she had found the one. Tears of joy welled up in Sneed's eyes as she realized that her search for the perfect gown had reached its conclusion. 
It was a gown that defied her expectations, elevating her to a regal status. It made her feel like a true superstar, ready to walk down the aisle with confidence and grace. In that moment, Sneed embraced the gown knowing that it would forever symbolize her refined elegance and unwavering sense of self. She was prepared to say yes to the gown that would make her wedding day a celebration of her unique style, captivating everyone in her path with her unmatched allure. Number 4. Bride Toya Lights, camera, action! It's a bride's moment, but something seems awry. Our leading lady, Toya, steps into the bridal boutique with dreams of a dress that will match her movie premiere vision. The excitement dances in her eyes for her love story began with a proposal that was straight out of Hollywood magic. Toya's fiancé, the charming hero, orchestrated a fake award show proposal that left her breathless. Surrounded by the glitz and glamour of a star-studded event, he dropped to one knee and asked her to be his leading lady forever. Oh, the romance! And now Toya seeks a gown that will capture the essence of that enchanting moment. But alas, fate has a different script in mind today. The boutique's owner, Lori, is absent, having met a dramatic end involving an unfortunate accident with a bridal gown. Monty and his trusty sidekick step up to the plate, taking charge in Lori's absence. The team must save the day and salvage Toya's dreams without their captain at the helm. Toya slips into the first gown, a trumpet-style beauty that molds her curves like a perfect embrace. She looks like a star herself, radiant and confident, and rates it a perfect 10. Ooh, you look good, girl. <laughs> but it's got a slightly different silhouette than a mermaid. Aww. To figure out the bride's dress. Yeah. You still giving it a 10? I'll give it a 9.5. Yet her entourage, those supposed loyal supporters, veto the dress. They claim it's too similar to the ones they've chosen for themselves as bridesmaids. Oh, the injustice. Toya casts the dress aside, heartbroken but determined to find the one that will truly make her feel like the leading lady she is. Undeterred, our bride seeks solace in another gown, and oh how it steals her breath away. It's a vision of bling with a poofy bottom that whispers promises of glamour and romance. As Toya gazes at herself in the mirror, she can't help but fall head over heels for the way it showcases her curves. It's the dress that could make her booty look like a work of art. She emerges, ready to share the newfound joy with her entourage. But alas, her bridesmaids have gone astray. Selfish and inconsiderate, they have abandoned her bride in search of their own dresses. Oh, the nerve! Their absence steals the spotlight from Toya's triumphant unveiling, leaving her feeling betrayed and alone. But fear not, dear readers, for Monty and the boutique staff refuse to let her dreams crumble. With Lori absent, they unite to turn the tide. They transform Toya into a vision of bridal perfection, adorning her with a beautiful headpiece, sparkling jewelry, and a delicate veil. In an instant, she became an actual bride, a radiant star deserving of adoration. The room erupts in ecstatic joy as her loved ones return, witnessing her transformation. Tears of happiness mingle with heartfelt hugs as the spotlight finds its rightful place on Toya's deserving shoulders. In this tale of love and resilience, the unexpected becomes an opportunity. The absence of Lori becomes a catalyst for the boutique staff to channel their inner heroes, reminding us that sometimes the show must go on without the director. And as the curtain falls on this chapter, Toya stands tall, her movie premiere vision realized, her heart full of love and gratitude for the remarkable cast that turned her darkest moment into a breathtaking triumph. Lights, camera, happily ever after, the end. Number 3. Bride Penny In the bustling bridal dress salon, anticipation filled the air as the staff prepared for the arrival of Penny Freeman and her entourage. Lori, the team leader, gathered her team for an important discussion before the bride's entrance. She emphasized the significance of ensuring Penny felt self-confident and beautiful on this special day, particularly because she had gained some weight due to her medication. Really put a lot of weight on her. She has been on so many different medications that we all can't even keep up. First time waiting for myself okay. or my fiance, so okay. we're looking at like $1,500. Okay. I'm marrying Darnell. The door swung open and Penny entered the salon accompanied by her friends, sister, son, and his fiancée. Her sister Linda, ever the supportive sibling, spoke about Penny's remarkable journey. Three years ago, Penny had faced a life-threatening ruptured brain aneurysm, undergoing a grueling process of relearning how to walk and talk. Linda reminded everyone of Penny's resilience, her triumph over adversity, and how lucky they all were to have her here today. 
Cassie, a seasoned consultant, approached Penny and led her inside to discuss her preferences. Penny shared her desire for a fitted dress with a budget of $1,500. Cassie sensed the bride's apprehension and resolved to find the perfect gown. She sought the assistance of Monty, a skilled stylist renowned for his ability to make every bride feel like a queen. Together, Cassie and Monty carefully selected a collection of dresses for Penny to try on. As Penny stepped into the dressing room, a mix of excitement and nervousness filled her heart. However, her hopes were dashed when the first dress failed to fit. Disappointment hung heavy in the room. The second dress yielded the same result, further eroding Penny's self-confidence. She began to believe that these challenges were unique to her, thinking that normal-sized women wouldn't encounter such difficulties. Feeling defeated, Penny called her sister into the dressing room seeking comfort and support. Linda embraced her, assuring her that she was beautiful regardless of the dress size. She delivered a much-needed pep talk, reminding Penny of her incredible journey and the strength she possessed. Empowered by her sister's words, Penny wiped away her tears and resolved to continue. Cassie, determined to salvage the day, brought forth a stunning v-neck silk organza dress that hugged Penny's curves perfectly. Tentatively, Penny emerged from the dressing room awaiting the reaction of her loved ones. However, an eerie silence enveloped the room. Her friends and family hesitated, unable to mask their disapproval despite knowing how self-conscious Penny was feeling. Devastated, Penny's spirit wavered and she questioned her own perception of beauty. She took a deep breath, gathering strength from within. She listened to her entourage's critiques and decided to try on another gown even though she believed it would accentuate her insecurities. I wanted to be simple and elegant. I wanted to just kind of flow. But I think I got flow here. You're awfully quiet, people. What's going on over there? Self-doubt gnawed at her and she began referring to herself as a chunky monkey. But Penny's loved ones would not let her succumb to her doubts. They showered her with affirmations, assuring her that she was stunning in every dress. Her son, recognizing her history of boldness, encouraged her to embrace her uniqueness and be audacious in her choices. Inspired by his words and the unwavering support of her family, Penny finally found conviction. In the end, Penny was convinced that her loved one saw the beauty she couldn't fully embrace yet. She stood tall, donning the gown that spoke to her heart and embodied her spirit. As she admired herself in the mirror, Penny realized that true beauty transcends dress sizes and embraces individuality. Amidst tears, laughter, and an array of emotions, the salon transformed into a sanctuary of love and acceptance. Penny's journey, marked by resilience and self-discovery, became a testament to the transformative power of self-confidence and the unwavering support of family and friends. In that sacred space, Penny not only found her dream dress but also rediscovered her inner strength, ready to embark on the next chapter of her life alongside her high school sweetheart, Darnell Bernard Harrington. Number 2. Bride Donetta in the charming town of Michigan, Donetta, a 43-year-old bride-to-be, embarked on a tumultuous journey in search of her dream wedding dress. Little did she know that this expedition would turn into a whirlwind of emotions and self-discovery. With a lively entourage of a dozen opinionated individuals, including family members, friends, and extended relatives, it felt as though Donetta had invited her entire clan along for the adventure. While her intention was to please everyone and create a picturesque wedding, she inadvertently put her own desires on the back burner. Michigan. So who all did you bring with you today? I brought my daughter, Lanise, my sister, Sashana, Tina, my nephew, JT, and my daughter's cousin, Teal. However, with just four months remaining until the grand day, Donetta was determined to find a gown that would leave her breathless and truly radiate her inner beauty. As Donetta stepped into the bridal boutique, chaos immediately ensued. Her entourage was a chorus of clashing voices, each offering their own conflicting ideas and creating a cacophony of strong-willed individuals. It was clear from the outset that this shopping expedition would be far from smooth sailing. The wise and perceptive consultants recognized the overwhelming number of opinions and understood the importance of focusing on Donetta's personal desires. They decided to kick off the dress-finding extravaganza with a gown that aligned with their own taste, hoping it would set the right tone. However, as Donetta emerged in the first dress, the entourage erupted in disapproval, demanding she retreat back to the dressing room. Their disregard for Donetta's feelings was evident as they insisted on an immediate change, making it abundantly clear that her initial choice was despised. 
Visibly hurt, Donetta shared in the consultant's disappointment. Undeterred by the setback, the consultants chose a dress recommended by Donetta's sister. However, the moment Donetta tried it on, she instantly despised it, swiftly discarding the garment and refusing to settle for something that didn't resonate with her spirit. The one we picked out. I'm tired of you sitting there. Everybody said no, they don't like With a heavy heart, she moved on to the third dress, only to feel like a complete mismatch. Overwhelmed and frustrated, tears streamed down her face in the solitude of the dressing room, while outside, her impatient entourage wondered what was taking her so long. Speculations arose, suggesting that Donetta might not be pleased with their selected dress. Impatience soon escalated into a raucous uproar as the entourage grew louder, demanding to witness Donetta in her gown. Their commotion reverberated through the salon, intensifying Donetta's distress. However, amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope emerged. Monty, the fashion director, keenly perceived Donetta's desperate longing for a show-stopping gown. With finesse and precision, he intervened, carefully selecting a dress that flawlessly encapsulated her vision. With a mix of anticipation and trepidation, Donetta finally emerged, adorned in the breathtaking gown handpicked by Monty. But instead of the expected applause and support, the entourage responded with jeers and laughter. Their hurtful comments pierced through Donetta's heart, comparing her to Big Bird and ridiculing her appearance. Utterly devastated, Donetta stood on the brink of despair while the consultants were disheartened by the entourage's cruelty. In a moment of profound clarity, the fashion director took a courageous stand, silencing the crowd. He confronted the entourage, delivering a powerful message in respect and kindness toward the bride. It was a wake-up call for Donetta, a realization that while she had been focusing on caring for everyone else, she had inadvertently neglected to prioritize her own well-being. Summoning her inner strength, Donetta re-emerged onto the stage, clad in a simple yet stunning dress that resonated with her true self. A hush fell over the room, as if time itself held its breath. One by one, she asked her entourage for their opinions, fully prepared for rejection. Yet this time, their judgments held no sway over her. She had discovered her inner voice and decided to trust her own judgment. The resounding no from each member of the entourage no longer carried weight. Donetta had unearthed her strength and embraced her unique path to finding the dress that would make her feel truly radiant on her special day. Leanne? Tanisha? No. She may not have found her dress, but I'll be damned if she didn't find her backbone. Thank you all! As she stood there basking in her newfound confidence, Donetta realized that the most important person to please was herself. The opinions of others could not diminish the joy and beauty she exuded in that moment. It was a transformative experience, a chapter in her life where she discovered her own resilience and the power of self-acceptance. And so, with her head held high and a genuine smile adorning her face, Donetta walked out of the boutique, leaving behind the chaos and noise of the entourage. She had embarked on a journey to find the perfect wedding dress, but what she discovered along the way was something far more precious. Her own authenticity and the unwavering strength to be true to herself no matter the circumstances. Number 1. Bride Sally Sally, a multitasking mother with a jam-packed schedule, approached the task of finding her wedding gown with a sense of urgency. Her pragmatic nature inclined her towards simpler dress options, yet deep down her childhood fantasies of princess-worthy gowns resurfaced. Ma? So, wait. congratulations. Thank you. And while we shop. Okay, off you go. Okay. Sally set her sight on a simple gown. Sally came to the realization that she didn't have to compromise and embarked on a quest to discover a dress that would make her feel like royalty. Assisted by David, Emmanuel, and Gemma, the team at the bridal store, Sally felt reassured that she was in capable hands. They comprehended her desire for something understated yet captivating. Eventually, Sally discovered a dress that accentuated her curves flawlessly, although she had reservations about the netting on the lower portion. The team, fully aware of her hesitations, offered another fitting session and diligently considered her feedback. Sally yearned for a dress that would truly embody her unique style from top to bottom. With bated breath, she entrusted David and Gemma's expertise. Emerging in a brand new dress, Sally's expectations were not only met but surpassed. The contemporary design lovingly embraced her curves, tailored to absolute perfection. David added a shimmering sash and a veil that matched flawlessly, injecting a touch of glamour into the ensemble. 
This young lady likes it. And Sophie, I think, would look lovely in it. Appropriate. Yeah. It's too much. It's bit of a waste, hello. <laughs> yeah. It... I'm not too sure. You want it? Yes. Yeah. As Sally gazed at her reflection in the mirror, a beaming smile spread across her face. This dress evoked a transformative feeling, one that made her feel different, unparalleled, and truly herself. It exceeded even her wildest dreams, instilling in her a newfound sense of confidence and radiance. Without a doubt, Sally knew she had made the perfect choice. Prepared to utter the definitive yes to the dress, she was unwavering in her belief that it would capture her individuality and style, ensuring her wedding day would be an authentic reflection of herself. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.